they're just nominal Christian. Jesus Christ the Lord. But they don't go to church. So they need you and I. I went to America to make money. Wallahi, in 1984. That's when I went to America. I get my visa from Kaduna. I went to America. When I went to get the visa, there's only three people waiting to get the visa. Three people. Nobody wants to go to America. Because at that time, Nigeria is higher. If you give one Naira, they give you six US dollars. That's how much I changed. So when I was going, I had $400, and I changed it times five. Imagine. Naira was great. There's no visa to go to America. But nobody go to America. They prefer to go to London, England. That's where they go. So I went to make money and come back home and live large and chill. You know? But when I went to America, I went looking for a job in Brooklyn. You know Brooklyn, New York City? And I went to look for a job. I couldn't get the job. Then I came outside. They told me, look, man, we're sorry. We're not hiring right now. Why don't you give us a number? We'll give you a call in about a week or two. There's a job. I said, okay, all right. It's no job. So I came outside. I was going home. Then I heard the Azan. It's a small masjid. I went there and I did my zuhur. Once I'm done doing my zuhur, the imam, you know, he rose up and he said, those of you who have never seen Sheikh Ahmed did that, he's here with us today. I was like, what? Did that? Thank God I didn't get the job. I'm happy I didn't get the job. Because Sheikh Dida is here. So he rose and he, you know, gave us 15 minutes lecture. And he left to, you know, uh, down south. After the lecture, my body begins to tell me that I've got to be like this man. So I was telling myself, this is it. I want to be a dad just like Sheikh Dida. My heart kept telling me that. I don't want nothing. I want to be like this man, subhanAllah. So when he finished, I went to him. I said, Sheikh. I want to be like you. He said, no, man, you can't be like me. I, said, I can't be like you. Who are you? I didn't tell him that, but I was thinking. He said, you know why I said that? He said, well, I said, I don't know. He said, you so, uh, what's your name? I said, my name is Muhammad Awal. And he said, my name is Ahmed Hussein Didat. He said, do you know anyone by the name Ahmed Didat in this world? Do you know anyone from South Africa? I said, no. He said, well, I'm unique. Allah created me unique. There's no second army did that. And no one can be like me. And he said, you Muhammad Awal, no one can be like you. You are unique. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be higher than me. Because if you become like me, look at my gray hair and everything, Islam will be stagnant. But if you supersede me, somebody will say, I want to be like I'm Muhammad Awal. And so that's how Islam grow. So from that time, after he finishes, I went, I follow him to South America. And I stay in Durban with Didat for 10 months. And the program is one and a half years. But I was so hungry for knowledge of comparative that I, I did it within 10, 10 months. I'm done. Graduated. I came back. Then I went back again. Then I do, start doing my research. And before I know, I've reached this level that I'm delivering lectures all over the world. My intention is different. To go in, I don't have money. But I do travel a lot, and I do deliver. That's, my, that's what I do. I talk. Today, if you give me the whole of Nigeria with mountain of gold, wallahi, to give up what I'm doing, me and you will have a boxing match. I'm not going to give this up. I'm so happy doing this. People are being changed. What, what is the best? The, the, the Quran said, if you, the Hadith really, said, if you could change one person, giving the alternative to become a Muslim, it is as if you make the whole world to become a Muslim. And people don't know. 